Hey guys, this is Game Advisor here, and we are going to be going over a fully comprehensive guide on the combat within Valheim. Just to give you a few things to look forward to, we'll be going over the differences between shields and armor block, and how much damage reduction you get from them, as well as each weapon and what type of damage they do. So, let's go ahead and get into it. Alrighty, so first up, let's talk about the difference between your armor and your shields and what the block number means or the damage reduction that you get from it. So if we go into here and we look at this armor piece right here, it says it's iron scale mail, great, you know, it doesn't matter who it's crafted by, the weight, blah, 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 we don't care about that stuff. What we care about is the armor value. So in this case, iron scale mail will give you 14 armor, as you can see just down there below. That's going to affect this number right here. So this is going to be your total number of armor that you are currently wearing. Now, I also have a cape on. That's going to give me an additional two and blah, 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 blah. Some other things along the way through all my other armor pieces. Each of these pieces will give you different amounts of armor, which will give you a reduction in the damage that you are going to be taking. So just to clarify here, this is not a flat reduction, but a more of a percentage reduction. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that real quick, just so you guys know. So let's go ahead and go find us an enemy. Sure, there isn't one too far away. We're just going to enable flight mode real quick to go find one. I'm sure there's one close by. If you guys are wondering how to do this, I will be making a video on how to enable all this stuff. Um, okay, let's not do a troll just yet. Let's see if we can find something a little easier. Uh, there should be some skelly boys here. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna go up here and say hi to these skeletons. Alright, go ahead and smack me. Hello? Hit me. Alright, so he's doing about one damage. Let's see how much else he can do. Another one damage, a little bit of change. Maybe like 1.5. Okay, 2.8 is the highest we've seen. Alrighty, so they're doing about one to three damage maximum. So let's go over here. We are going to take off our armor. And then we are going to go back over and look at the difference. Remember, we had 38 armor before we started this. And once we take it all off, we're now at zero. And let's go ahead and fly back over. Hello, skellies. I'm back. I'm ready to be smacked again. All right, I might die, so I have to do this quick. So we're only going to get one or two hits. Go ahead and hit me. Okay, so they just did 16 damage right there. That is a big, big difference. Let's go ahead and land real quick. So armor, in other words, even though I had 36 of it, it still only reduced the damage there by about 80%. Now, again, I'm not exactly sure what math they're using behind this. Because if I still go get smacked by something that hits a little bit harder, let's go find ourselves that little troll cave we saw earlier if we can. Alright, here we go. We can use this. Alright, go ahead and spawn in, my boys. Come get me, Grey Dwarfs. So, the armor here is giving us that percentage damage reduction. And again, I'm not sure if I have the math on it, but like, right here, this guy's... Okay, he doesn't hit hard enough. That's okay. No worries. The, the idea here is pretty straightforward, though. The, the armor is giving you a percentage reduction, which the shields are not. Now, let's go ahead to a little bit of a harder zone and see how this works there. Alrighty, so here we are in the plains biome, and we have a little death mosquito. So let's go ahead and just get a baseline for how much damage he's going to do with my armor on. Okay, so he did about 45 damage there. Let's see him hit me again. By the way, again, I do have the cheats enabled just to show off this stuff. Um, it, right now I'm in god mode, so he can't actually kill me. But we still get the damage values. It doesn't change any of that. All right, so we did 47. We'll get one more just to make sure that we can get a full kind of range of his damage roughly. Go ahead and hit me again, Mr. Death Skeeto. 41 damage. Okay. So now let's go ahead and take off my armor. Just so we can get a baseline for that. Okay, so I still had one piece on that was 75, so we won't count that one. Let's do two more hits just to make sure we're getting a baseline 
for how much damage I'm gonna take without any armor on. Okay, 86. That is a crap load of damage. This is why people die to you all the time, Mr. Deskido. The devs even had to nerf you. All right, come on, hit me one more time. I'm ready. All right, 73. So he still hits really hard. So my armor didn't even reduce the damage that much overall. Now let's see what happens when I pull out my iron shield, which has a block power of 60 when I actually block him. So bring it on, Mr. Deskido. I'm ready. I'm going to block you this time. Come on. Don't be shy. All right, 25 damage. So it blocked 61 of the damage there. Let's see him hit me again. I'm assuming we must have been getting to lower range when I wasn't blocking before. Let's see him hit me one more time. 11 damage. Okay, that, that would add up with about the 75 to 85 damage we were taking. And let's get one more time. Now, as you can see here, the shields are so good in this game because they reduce the flat amount of damage you're taking. So if something were to say hit me for 100 damage, my block is going to block the 61.5 damage that it says it's going to every single time. This number does go up and you get higher stats in it. So just to give you an idea here of where I'm at, I only have five in blocking on this character. So I don't block a lot and I don't have a lot of protection. But as you get that up higher, you can get it to almost 10, 20 extra points on your shield, which can make a huge difference. For an example here, if I had 20 extra points on my blocking, this death skeeta would do no damage to me at all. Now, if I throw in my armor, let's go ahead and get an idea here. Now, he just did 84 when I was naked there, so he's he hits really hard. Put all the armor on. And now we're going to block with the armor. Let's see how much damage take. Four damage. So what's happening is the game is doing the damage to the shield, registering how much it's blocking, and then my armor takes out a percentage of what's left. So 0.6. That's nothing. So this just gives you an idea of how powerful shields and armor when it's combined can actually be in Valheim, especially when you're fighting things like this stupid Deskito that are a pain to deal with or even more so when you're fighting some of the later bosses, which I won't spoil for you guys, because I'm sure some of you probably haven't gotten there yet. Alrighty, so next up, we're going to be talking about how your shields and other weapons parry force and parry bonus work. Obviously, like I just said, shields are not the only thing that can do this. They're just a good example of it. So we're going to be using that for the purpose of this here. So let's go ahead and find ourselves an enemy. I believe there was a Grey Dwarf over here somewhere. Here he is. Okay, so if I let this Grey Dwarf come over to me, I need to block right before he hits me in order to get the parry. So that's the most important part of this. This can be done with any weapon. So that was not the parry. That was just me leveling up. There we go. That's the parry. So the parry force determines how far back the enemy is knocked. So you can see there he's getting knocked a good little chunk away from me. But if, say, I were to equip something with less parry force or more, let's use what we got here. Let's use this guy. This thing has 70 parry force. So if I parry them, they should go flying by comparison. Oh, he went into a tree. Let's try that again. So he definitely goes further back. And you can see that that's what the parry force does. All it's going to do is it just pushes them back significantly further the higher the parry force is. It doesn't do damage. It doesn't do anything. All it is is a determination for the distance in which they will travel after being parried. Now let's go ahead and go back to the shield. And you can see on this one, this one has a parry bonus of 1.5 times. So that means after I parry them, when they're in that little arm flailing animation, see if we can get one land, like right there. Let's try to get another one so it's a little more clear here. Go ahead and hit me, Mr. Greydor. See how his arms are kind of flailing? If you hit him during that time, he will take 1.5 times additional damage. So to test that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out something that hopefully won't kill them too fast. Let's just use my fist, because that's the easiest thing to use. So go ahead and hit me. I parried him. I did 3.2 damage, and you hear that little, like, ka sound right after you get that uh, bonus damage. So oh, I just blocked it. Come back. Again. Well, oh, he didn't want to play with me. Come on, Mr. Grey Dwarf. Why is there got to be two of you right now? You hear that sound I'm getting when I hit him? That's me getting the bonus damage out of it. 
So this can be seen obviously a lot more with things that have more health. So if you can parry like a troll, if you could parry a uh, just anything pretty much that has more HP than a Grey Dwarf, you're going to see that damage bonus. So this is just me hitting them without any damage bonus whatsoever. So when I use my open hand, not the one with the shield, I'm doing about 1.5, maybe 2.5 to 3 damage. But if I get that knockback, or parry rather, I'm doing 5 damage, sometimes even all the way up to 6. So I'm getting a 1.5 times damage bonus. Now again, different weapons have different parry bonus amounts. So say I don't want to use my shield, and I'm just going to rock, I don't know, let's say... Uh, this guy, he has a three times parry bonus. So with this one special ability, I can force it, but we're just gonna do it by default. So come over here, Mr. Grey Dwarf. Let's get a parry on you. 48 damage with one smack. Now normally a Grey Dwarf would take two hits to kill with this thing. So they're not exactly that hard to deal with. But when you're fighting things like say in the plains biome, that parry bonus can make a huge difference in the amount of damage output you can put out quickly. All right, so we got a little goblin here. Let's go ahead and see if we can get the parry on him. All right, didn't get it that time. Oh my goodness, the stupid screen shake. All right, it's not working, so we're gonna do it the cheese way, knock him back. Did about 20, 25 damage. Now we're gonna hit him without having the knock back on him and see how much we do. We only did about 17 and about 19. And that's because we didn't get the proper parry on these guys. So if I were to get a proper parry with this weapon, I would be doing about three times the damage. But instead, we're only getting less because we're using the special ability on the at gear. So the at gear's little knockback where they flail, I believe is a 1.5 times rather than its default parry bonus of a three times. So just keep that in mind if you're wondering why you're not getting that full parry bonus damage amount. Alrighty, so next up, what we're gonna cover is how does the backstab damage in Valheim work? Well, there are a few requirements in order to get that damage bonus. The first requirement is going to be that they have not noticed you, meaning that you are going to be able to shoot them in the back or hit them in the back. And secondly, that they have not taken any damage yet. So you are only gonna get this bonus once. If you're looking to do the most amount of damage with your backstab as possible, you're gonna wanna use the knife. But if you're like me, and you don't like getting up close and personal a lot of times with your enemies, and you decide to do the bow, you can still do that. All right, so I am in stealth. I've got my weapon. He's looking away from me, he has not noticed me yet. I hit him and I get 62 damage. So that's my backstab bonus coming in. So normally I probably would have hit that guy for about 20, 21. So that's what backstab damage does. It can be done with melee weapons. It just requires you to sneak up to them, which some enemies it's going to be easier than others. Just keep that in mind when you're deciding what weapons you want to use. I know the knife does a ton of damage and it's really good against trolls because they seem not to notice you if you're in stealth very much, especially if you're wearing the troll hide armor. But if you're not, usually the bow is going to be your best way to go for your first initial hit because you're almost guaranteeing you're going to get that backstab bonus. And I just want to show off that it doesn't actually matter if you shoot them in the back or not. So let's use these gray dwarfs as an example here. If I shoot this guy, see he has not noticed me. I, it's because I'm in the debug cam. And if I shoot him in the front, let's make sure we're hitting him in the front so we don't mess this up. I still get my bonus damage. So the backstab doesn't actually require you to hit them in the back. It doesn't make a difference if you hit them in the back whatsoever. So I can shoot this guy in the back. I did the same amount of damage. All that matters is that they have full HP and that they have not noticed you. So just to clarify one last time, guys, when you're reading that butt thing that says backstab damage, that should more so be like your stealth damage, and it's only your initial hit. If you've ever played Skyrim, it works kind of similar to that. There's just not a flat, it doesn't matter if you hit them in the back. Just, just hit them when they haven't seen you and you'll get the damage. Alrighty, so now let's talk about what do stars mean in Valheim? Well, the easiest way to explain this is to pretty much just show you guys. So I'm gonna fly over here so I don't accidentally aggro these things. You can see today we have two necks here. We have the no star neck, the one that looks like default right here, and then we have this kind of bluish color. 
anything with a star is going to look different in some way. Some are more drastic than others. For an example, the one star boars just have an extra layer of tusks. It's kind of hard to tell until you get up close. But the trolls, on the other hand, have a totally different skin color. So all sorts of different things in Valheim can have stars. Every NPC and enemy that spawns in the game, excluding the merchant, of course, can have one of these stars. A star, all it means is that it has a level. So if we were to say this is a level zero neck, this would be then a level one neck. And I've seen them, I believe, all the way up to two stars. They might go higher than this, so don't quote me on that. But let's go ahead and see what the difference is. I know they do some more damage and they have some more health, so that's something to take in consideration. Usually it's quite dramatic. So let's go ahead and take out this no star neck real quick. All right, so he's doing about five damage per hit. Let's see if we can kill him with our punches, our fists of fury. Yeah, he's doing about 5.7 damage per hit. Then let's aggro this one star neck. How much damage is he gonna do? Okay, so he's doing eight damage. Let's see if he wants to hit me again. Eight damage again. Don't be shy, Mr. Neck, you can hit me. I don't mind. Another eight and a half damage. So, as you can see, he's doing a good amount more. Now, if you take something like a troll, or anything that's more threatening than a neck, which is pretty much everything in the game other than deers, you will see that damage difference quite dramatically. So, say a troll would normally do 50, it would be doing 80 instead. And that could be a huge difference when you're trying not to die to things. However, there is a benefit to killing these things when they're at higher stars. So go ahead and knock this guy out as you can see we should get two neck tails instead of one obviously necks aren't a guaranteed drop for anything but if they do drop and it is a one star you would get two and if it's a two star you would get three now the next question i'm sure plenty of you want to know is what's the difference if i tame something that has a star versus taming something that doesn't have a star and to be honest the easiest way to answer this is yes it matters <laughs> The, all the stars do is they give you additional meat when they spawn. So when they start breeding, say you make a boar farm, let's say, and you breed two one-star boars together, you're going to get a one-star boar as an output. If you have a two-star and a one-star, you have a chance to get a one- or a two-star boar. So the idea is you want to try to breed the highest star animals you possibly can, because if you're using them to farm or if you're using them to fight, like wolves or something, they will do additional damage and have more health and also drop more items on their death. So there's really no downside to taming something with higher stars other than they just might be a little bit more difficult to tame due to the fact that they just do more damage and are make it a little bit more risky for you to die to them. Alrighty, so next up we're going to be covering different damage types and the different damage colors and what they mean in Valheim. So we're gonna be using our friendly neighborhood troll here to demonstrate this. So if I use this spear which does pierce damage, trolls take additional pierce damage, which means we're gonna get that yellow damage number, which means you're getting additional damage because they are vulnerable to it. Now, if let's say I used a bow, which also does pierce damage, we're gonna get that same effect. Again, we're getting that yellow number, which is indicating that it's vulnerable to that damage type. However, if I use my mace, which is a blunt damage type, we get gray numbers, and that is because he is resistant to that damage type. Let's just use slash here, so we have a third benchmark, which is white damage. So the white damage on this guy is your normal, he's not vulnerable, he's not resistant, he just takes the normal amount of damage your weapon would do to that creature. Now this applies to everything, like skeletons for an example, which are vulnerable to blunt damage types, or to trees, which are also how the elemental effects work. You can do fire damage to them, which they are vulnerable to that fire damage. However, those don't actually show up with the yellow damage number for some reason with the elemental effects, but they do still take additional damage on things like trees when you're using fire damage. So that's pretty much all it is. So if you're wondering what those numbers were, that's all they are. If they're white, that means you're doing your normal amount. If they're yellow, you're doing additional. And if they are gray, you're doing reduced damage to that creature based on the type of damage you are doing. And obviously, every weapon in Valheim is going to do different types of damage. 
Um, just to give you an idea here, spears, glaives, uh, bows, they all do pierce damage. Um, daggers also do pierce damage as one of their weapon types, and so do... Uh, what is it? Oh no, I'm sorry. No, it's just daggers. And then you have your slashing damage, which is from your axes, your swords, uh, and then your blunt damage, which are from your big giant two-handed maces and clubs or hammers. And that's pretty much it. Now there are elemental damage types in Valheim, like the fire, which we talked about a second ago, and we're going to go talk about those right now. Alrighty, so next up, let's go ahead and talk about the elemental damage. And then to show this off, we're going to use this blob here. So if I walk up to this blob and I let him poison me, go ahead and poison me, Mr. Blob. I'm taking about 3.3 damage per second, alright? So that's not too bad. Now let's go ahead and throw on our armor. And then we're going to go back down and see how much damage we take. I'm going to wait for this poison to wear off. Okay, it's gone. Come here, Mr. Blob. I need to be poisoned. Right here, in case you couldn't see. So 3.3 damage again. So basically what that's telling us is that when you have armor on, it does not make a difference for the damage of elemental effects. However, this rule is not always true. I'm not sure why this happens, but if you were to say build a campfire, which we'll just throw one down somewhere where it's not raining real quick, that way we can show this off. So let's go just way out into the woods and let's just plop ourselves down a campfire. So I throw this down. It is raining, but that's okay. We can still show it off before it goes out. My burning damage is only 0.1 with my armor on. If I take it off, however, and again, I don't know why this is the way it is, but with poison in particular, it doesn't matter if you're wearing armor or not. But with fire, it definitely does. As you can see, I'm taking two damage per tick instead of 0.1. So if let's just get something in between here just to show it off again. I walk into the fire, I'm taking 0.4 damage because I have armor on. But this doesn't work with poison. I'm not sure really why. Maybe this was something they planned on implementing for everything in the game and they just decided, you know, because people are going to walk in their campfires, we won't apply it to campfires. But it's definitely a thing. You could, I mean, I could literally just stand in this fire all the live long day. And if I were on, you know, my normal character with some decent armor, I would just never die because it does no damage whatsoever. I would heal faster than it. But poison, on the other hand, I could be wearing as much armor as I possibly want, and I'm still going to be taking 3 to 4 damage per second from that blob. I don't really like this. Maybe you guys do. I think it needs to be one way or the other, not both. But anyways, it's a good thing to know that elemental damage changes based on the type you're taking and changes based on whether or not you're wearing armor only with fire damage as far as we can tell so far. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and if you guys did like the content, please make sure to like and subscribe as we put out new Valheim tutorials constantly. If you're wondering how I'm able to run in the air like this, all you need to do is subscribe to our channel, as we're going to be putting out a video here very shortly about how to enable cheats in your game if that is something you want to do. Either way, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.